Most people think cedar thickets are, are great habitat for whitetails and hold a lot of deer. I mean, yes, don't get me wrong, they're thick cover, but that's pretty much all they provide is just some really thick cover. They provide no nutrients. Um, there's no ground cover underneath these cedars. You can see it's super thick under here, and uh, there's no ground, ground habitat whatsoever. So we're gonna come in here, cut these cedars. Being cedars, you don't have to treat it with any herbicide to kill them. As soon as you cut them, just a stump, the tree's dead, and then we'll follow up in a month with fire once these, these stumps and um, the tops have dried out and native habitat will come back in in place of this and we'll have a much better uh, habitat than what we started with. This past winter I added the task of transforming a 10 acre area of monocultured cedars back into native habitat. On paper, the task is simple. Cut about 80, 90% of the cedars all with a chainsaw fell them the majority of the same direction, let them dry, then follow up with fire. From there, Mother Nature will complete the transformation. The physical portion of the task is accompanied by a lot of hard work, so transforming this back into native habitat will have an endless amount of benefits for not only deer, but all sorts of wildlife. There was a fair amount of uh, little blue stem and yeah. some big there's blue stem that came back in. Little blue, there's Indian grass down there. Still a little bit of a mix of fescue. Uh, yeah. But if if you get this thing burned mm -hmm. um, the right time next year, yep. kind of like the multiple rows, you can thin out some of the fescue in here. Right when it's greened up. So you think we should wait a year on these? Um, You can wait till later in the spring if you want to. Okay. Now we're over here where we um, came through, my dad and I, and we've roughly got like a 10 acre area of monocultured, monocultured cedars in here. And we right. came in and cleared out about an acre, acre and a half maybe. Um, didn't really leave any standing, which is okay. But I wanted to get your viewpoint on, on what we should do moving forward, when we should maybe burn this. Right. Um, or if we should, and also if we should continue to uh, clear many more cedars. Right. Uh Definitely clear some more cedars. Um, if there's an adjustment just from mobility and usability, future wildlife, because there's so much structure, may choose to girdle 30, 40% of them, kill them standing, um, and then flush cut the rest of them. When you kind of mitigate how much debris gets down and then you come back and you burn them, obviously cedar gets flashy when, it, when you burn it, you'll pretty much crown out the rest of the other ones too. So you kind of uh, two stage will reduce that entire stand, but have a lot more mobility throughout here. It's always tough to cut cedar because the way that it grows, you look back over here, you've got 50, 60 stems in a very small area. So, you know, one falls into the next one, to the next one, then you're essentially got pressure on the next one that you're cutting. So trying to disassemble it, right, in a organized fashion, but then fire will kind of finish the treatment, if you will. Um, but at the end of the day, 10 acres of cedar monoculture, there's no food. There's right. very, very little cover value. Um, a lot of people think that it's good thermal cover, but really you go into these stands especially this one, a nice big south facing slope. With it being an evergreen, you're not getting sunlight penetration in here. It's blocking the sun. It's a lot cooler. Um, so certainly on south facing exposures, a monoculture of cedars really taking the advantage of a south facing slope and, and just make it at zero, right? Um, or next to zero. But coming in here cutting, burning, and routinely burning, that's a fantastic approach. I, I definitely do. Um, 
all 10 acres, disassemble it methodically. It's going to take some time. Um, I think it's easier to do it with a chainsaw too, yeah. uh, opposed to machinery, especially on slopes. Um, it's a lot of work, but at the end of it, you're left with pretty dynamic 10 acres. Could enroll in brush management through equip since you're doing other equip practices on the property. Um, a little bit of financial assistance with that. Uh, makes you getting out of bed a little bit easier yeah. too. Yeah. Um, but wildlife wise, huge value. Yeah. Got to get them going. Yeah. It is a lot of work. Um, following them the right direction is tough, mm -hmm. but on the bright side with cedars, you don't have to treat them. So you can go in, okay. you just, as long as you're cutting through that cambium layer, they're dead. You don't yeah. have to treat them with any sort of herbicide or anything like that to kill them off. They're, they're gone. So that part is super nice. Cause imagine if you had to treat every single one of these stuff. It would take mm. forever. Uh, at least twice as long. <laughs> one thing I do like to burn them, not when they've roasted for, let's say sat for a couple years. Um, when there's even some green tinge on them, the intensity of that fire, it's not, it's not as flashy because there's some moisture still in that. Like it, it will actually consume more of the, the, um, the cedar itself instead of just a super dry cedar that just flashes up and then it's done. Um, so I don't mind cutting them, waiting six, eight weeks and then hitting them with fire. Yeah, and another point that you also made that you know, if you don't, whatever is left over, whatever skeleton might be left over um, in the years to come from what we've, we've cut down, burned, you, it's okay to come in with machinery and, you know, like a grapple or, or mm -hmm. something and, and then pile them up in one spot and then burn the remnants to just remove some yeah, of those skeletons. It, especially when they're, they're dog hair thick like this, Yeah. right? Some areas where they're dotted, you don't have to worry about that. No, and it's probably good um, habitat for turkeys for nesting and, mm -hmm. and whatnot. But. For sure. Yeah, that's what people think about cedars, like for hunting, from a hunting perspective, is like cover for deer. And a lot of times right. that's the case like out in western Kansas and draws and, yep. and when they're this down here. But these Correct. have completely grown above that and, and yes. are unusable. I don't mind the dotted shrubby cedar, um, windbreak, a little bit of refuge if you get snow, um, but 10 acres of monoculture yeah. and there's nothing underneath. That's not valuable, right? right. So it's we can't hate the, the the species itself. It's the way that it's growing, right? right? It's going to determine if there's value or not. It's in the Christmas tree farm. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a that's disaster. that's the kind of stuff right there. It's like there's no use for that. The the low limbs of when this thing was growing, like deer don't want to routinely travel through. They may cut through, like maybe something like this. Right. Heck, I don't even think that's deer. No, it's probably um, raccoons. Yeah, but it, it's not nearly as usable as many people think. Look at the pollen that just came off there. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Welcome to spring. Mm -hmm. and look at the base of native grass too that's gonna come back from exactly. felling. Exactly, yeah. So here, here's your example of, of why you leave some, um, but, but obviously sunlight, this is, the absence of sunlight, there's nothing in the understory, no usage. Here's the presence of sunlight, aromatic sumac, native grass coming back. There's not a seed, seed bank difference right here. This is just no sunlight, sunlight. Now we've got foraging cover. It is April 24th and I'm back here at the burn. Well, it's about to be a burn. It's the cedars that we cut, I think a couple months ago. Today we have low humidity, which is perfect. It just rained yesterday, so the surrounding area is wet. Everything's starting to really green up. On the down, downwind side of this, this burn that I'm gonna have today, we already have a fire line in because we burned a unit right here. On the upwind side, We've got cedars surrounding it, so the fire's not going to carry through that. Um, should be very safe.
What are you doing? What, what are we gonna go do? Whoa, what are you doing? You're riding on a rooster? Mm -hmm. That's silly. What are we gonna what are we gonna go do? Uh, we're gonna go get on the bobcat. And do what? Move some logs. Move some logs, that's right. We're gonna go check out the burn that we had. We burnt well we cut down a bunch of cedars. We burned them, and now we're gonna move the the logs, the the stems that are left, pile them up, and maybe light them on fire if the conditions are right. But we gotta get them out of the way from where they're at right now, right? Yep. Let's go. Yeah. Can you climb up in there? No. No, you don't have to. I'll lift you up in there. Don't usually self film here, but. That's what we're doing today. Came back up here on this same cedar area that we cut down, burned the cedars, got the skeletons laying here still, got the bobcat here obviously, and what are we gonna do? Um, I don't know. You don't know? Yeah, we just talked about this. Oh yeah, got on the bobcat, move some logs. Yep, we're gonna move all these skeletons into a pile, probably right down here where the burn didn't actually really carry into a bunch of saplings that are, that are right over there and um, stack them up there and light them on fire. I don't know if they'll light today or not, but if they don't light today, try again tomorrow or another time. But nonetheless, there are native species all over coming up in here. Got little blue stem everywhere in here. Sumac coming in, as well as some Coreopsis, um, milkweed, just all sorts of different plant species come in, which is so cool to see because the majority of this here it's a native seed bed that's just been sitting dormant underneath this monoculture for probably 40 to 50 years as these cedars have grown and just sucked out all of the sunlight from everywhere else. So this is just so neat to watch it just progress and, and come back to life out of a monoculture into a biodiverse um, habitat. So I'm going to get to work, set up a time lapse and film the process of picking up all these skeletons. All right, it is June 13th. We, um, my dad and I first initially came in here in, I believe it was February, and just started essentially just clear cutting this. I know, <laughs> I know Matt said leave about 80%, or I'm sorry, 20%, do 80, 90% cutting well, we did pretty much 100%. <laughs> and then I followed up two months later with fire on, on the trees exactly where they were laying, just walked through here with a drip torch. It just exploded in flames, thankfully. A uh, day or two before that, we had a good rain, so all the other fuel, the surrounding fuel was wet and the fire went nowhere. It consumed most of these cedars, the ones that it didn't. I came in with the skid, the skid steer, piled them up in two different piles, lit those on fire to kind of just break them down even more, and then this is the response we have. So. And what a fast response. I think this is the, the stuff that everyone gets really nervous about is, you know, they look at the cedar monoculture and they're like, well, I know it's not like maybe crazy productive, but sometimes I see deer come in and out and you guys have experienced that too, but you knew that there was more, let's say, in the soil to offer instead of that cedar monoculture. And we're seeing the benefits of that right here through warm season grasses coming back, native warm season grasses, sumac moths, there's a little bit of shingle oak re-sprouts, um, ragweed, beggar's lice, um, desmodium, partridge pea, a lot of native browse, but also it's gonna be cover. And look at the consumption of the cedar too. Sure, there's the main log here, but these things only dried for, you said two months? Two months, frame? yep. Two months, and so they probably had still some orange needles on them, um, and maybe a little bit of a mix of green too. But I, as opposed to waiting multiple years, I like to burn them pretty quick, that 30 to 60 day window. And because they have a little bit of moisture retention, they actually burn a little bit slower. It feels right. like it burns hot when you light it off, but when they burn a little bit slower than that super flashy fire after waiting two years, you get more consumption of those limbs and skeletons. But man, what, what was 
impenetrable when we were here in March. Yeah. Like you could not walk through here. It's now 100% yeah. usable. This is exactly what it looked like right back here, which this is only about an acre, acre and a half of the full 10 acres that we intend to do this to. Um, but you can see the dramatic difference of, of what it once was and, and now is today. And I'm pretty pleased with it. You should be. Next year, like a year from now, this will be, I would, I mean, Grass phenomenal. is to here, sumac. At the end of this growing season, they're going to be chest high. Um, and it's going to really fill, again, with food and cover. And it is very clear. It is night and day, the difference between the absence of food and the absence of cover. And really the absence of inability to, to, to cut through there. It's very unusable. This is extremely usable. Heck, you could see turkeys in here. If yeah. You, you know? Yeah. This is usable for, for a turkey, whereas that, you really never would have seen a bird in there. Yeah, when I pulled up here two weeks ago, there was a hen right here. I assume had a nest close or just dusting, like, like Matt sure. said. But regardless, they're using it now, and they weren't before. And uh, also deer. Right yeah, there's browse through we here. Just jumped everywhere. a doe right there mm -hmm. on, the, on the fringe of it. So. In a sumac patch that had been here, right? So right. that's then what's created and coming on, and nothing was planted. Nope. Nothing was planted. Native Seed Bank expression. I love it.